Fly anywhere with the Anywhere Map. I'm here today with Bob Zyko, who recently wrote an article on thepilotreport.com about using the Anywhere Map. And today, he's actually going to show us an actual demonstration of how to use the hardware and software. This is an Anywhere Map system running on uh, hardware. It's about three or four years old. It's a Samsung solid state tablet. Uh, it does not have a built-in GPS. This particular one uses a Bluetooth GPS, which is powered by a USB connection. In this plane, I stick it under the glare shield over here, here and it uh, just communicates with Bluetooth. The current models that you can get from Anywhere Map that they sell pre-configured all have internal GPS. It's one less thing to worry about. This one right now is also running off of ground power since the engine isn't running. So the batteries in the tablet are good for about three hours um, and in the GPS about 45 hours. Okay. Now in the basic system starting up right now we're seeing the VFR chart view. Uh, the GPS is on it's showing us here right on the Frederick Airport. It's kind of interesting the charts don't always line up with real life. Uh, they, in the VFR charts they give you a little bit of leeway between just to make it fit right or look right. The airport may be not quite exactly where it is. Um, and that's why the database drawn airport is just slightly off of the one on the chart. Okay. Uh, in this view we're seeing these little blue dots all around are actually obstacles. And you can click on them and they'll tell you what the obstacle is here. It's a tank. It's 170 feet above ground level. Uh, what's nice about that, as you climb, these will slowly disappear off the screen uh, so it's not all cluttered up with a bunch of uh, you know, blue dots everywhere. Well, that's a cool feature. Mm -hmm. Right now, the reason everything is red is because I have a terrain above uh, enabled. And what that will do is it will shade all terrain that's within 500 feet of your current altitude red. And within 1,000 feet, it will shade it yellow. Uh, here, obviously, since we're on the ground, everything is red. So we can just turn that off to clear up the map. Okay. And what's nice about that is if you're taking off, for example, everything will be red. And as you climb, it will start to clear up and it will be clear like it is here. Like this mountain ridge will stay red until uh, so you get to above 3,000 feet. You're above the mountains. We'll start losing that shading. But it kind of gives you a quick glance that you can see if there's any terrain in your area. Uh, whereas it may be a little bit harder to see on this sectional view that this is actually high terrain. Another feature that is enabled on this view is it's highlighting airspace that's on our altitude um, that would be an issue for us. Uh, here it's highlighting the Hagerstown uh, Class D airspace. If we were say at 8,000 feet this ring would not be highlighted because okay. it would not be a factor. Right, that's cool. So if we uh, toggle down to the Class B airspace around DC and Baltimore you can see the surface rings are highlighted green here, here, and the other rings are not because they're we're below those rings. Uh, here it's showing the TFR data, uh, which always shows, uh, which is delivered from the XM satellite, which we'll get into in a minute. And we can change this view. On the next screen is an IFR chart. And let me turn off these radars and turn off the, again the terrain. In this view, it's showing us a low and route chart. And I can change from this full compass row as I can click a button, change it to the arc view, which I like more. And it's showing us the base IFR low and route chart, but I've enabled in the setup to also overlay a computer drawn um, VOR rows and also a computer drawn airways for because it's a little bit easier to read sometimes than looking seeing Victor 474 or looking seeing 474 because these are sometimes drawn at an angle. Okay. So it gives you the ability to overlay whatever you want. And what's nice about each of these views has their own setup. So I can go into a setup here, and for example, this view is telling me it's showing VORs, not showing the frequency, it's showing the compass rows. Uh, it's showing fixes at low and high. Um, I have jet routes disabled, and you can turn other things on and off as well, such as airports. It also includes private airports and Canadian, which is a nice feature. And you can turn the airspace on or off. Being an IFR, I usually disable the airspace warnings because you would. Uh, all except TFRs. Same thing with geography, you can turn on these various features. And these are just more setups. And this is weather, which we'll get into in a minute here. We'll get out of here. The next page is a terrain map. And again, this is all showing these overlays of the obstacles. 
we'll go in here quickly and change this so we can actually see the, the high resolution terrain. This has 90 meter terrain database, which is a really high resolution terrain like you'd see on a G1000. So I will turn off red above so it looks better here on the ground. And you can see the real high resolution terrain. And if I go to a view whole country mode, you can see how everything is shaded nicely the way you expect it to be. Mm -hmm. Nice high resolution terrain. It's not blocky. Um, Everything is nice and crisp, even if you zoom in real far, uh, you can see the features around. This is a fairly flat area, you can see there's some, some higher terrain here. Mm -hmm. And in this view, I turn off all airspace. This may be used when flying VFR around mountains. Um, and of course you can configure this on the fly, if you want to turn on airspace you can. Here it's showing P40, I have TFRs always enabled no matter what. So here's the showing P40. And if P40 is expanded, which is the presidential retreat, it will show the expanded ring. We go to the next page, which is weather. Now currently on the weather page, I have terrain enabled, but very light. You can see it's barely there, because what the most important is the weather on this page. And all the other pages, you can overlay the same weather details as well, but I'll show you here. Here we are at Frederick. On this page, I have airports turned off. Okay. At least some of them. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of keep it on clutter because I want to see where the storms are. And you also can change how the opacity of these. So they can either be see-through or stick out. Here I have them 100% color so you can see that they're there. Right now what we're seeing obviously is a radar return of a thunderstorm that's just over the Pennsylvania line. And we can click these little things here and these tell us the storm tracks. And it's telling us this particular storm has an ID um, the tops are above flight level 300, the bases are 11,000, tells you the max radar return and possible hail size. And the vector of the storm track, this one was going 101 degrees at 15 knots. It also shows you that there's a line as well. Uh, these are lightning strikes that are received over the XM system. Mm -hmm. Now you can turn off, if you're flying in a lot of light uh, radar returns, you want to hide them so you just can focus on the, the real heavy convective, you can turn off the greens. And in this case, it will. you can just see where the severe weather is okay. if you want to not worry about the green. If you're flying IFR, there's a lot of green, you want to just keep the screen clear, you right. can turn those off. And there's also uh, radar looping as well, which will loop, and you can see it animates the radar. Now the system hasn't been on very long, so there's not that many uh, tracks in here to, to loop. Okay. I think there's only two pictures. They're updated every few minutes. Usually two to three minutes, sometimes four minutes, you get an update. So here it's showing us the track of the radar. I'm going to turn that off. Normally I leave it on just the current view, but if you wonder what the track of the storm is, you can leave that run and it, you'll see the loop. Okay. And we can turn on infrared satellite. And you can see here, just like the satellite uh, picture you get online, obviously the darker colors are lower clouds, the whites and the grays are high clouds, which corresponds to the center of the thunderstorm. If I turn off the radar, you can actually see these are very high clouds for in the 30, 40,000 mm -hmm. foot range. And this kind of lets you see if things are building that haven't yet developed into storms yet. And that's also delivered as an infrared satellite picture. So you can kind of see where the infrared cloud cover is around you. So here we can see this whole complex of storms around the DC area. Uh, several of them have severe storm uh, tracks that go, other ones are just just some light rain, moderate rain, and the lightning bolts, you can turn those on and off as well. Okay. And that's all delivered by XM satellite, and we can show you the hardware for that later, but here I can just bring up the statistics and see this is the weather information that's been delivered by XM so far. Nexrad on uh, one minute old, METARs, there's, they're new. TAF six minutes, lightning two minutes, echo tops four minutes. These are how many updates we've received since starting the program. And then just down here it goes into some information about uh, the signal strength uh, and the error rate of the satellite. There's two XM satellites and there's also a terrestrial ground repeater for if you're driving in a sea. But mm -hmm. in the airplane that pretty much never has a signal. But satellite one and two right now are getting a good signal. So if we go back to just the basic uh, VFR page, we can see how we have these uh, radar features we can turn on and off. The clouds turn on and off. The storm tracks are still showing up there. Mm -hmm.